Hello and welcome to Here Be Monsters, where today I'm talking about a Canadian werewolf movie. Made back in the year 2000, Ginger Snaps is the tale of two sisters, Ginger and Bridget, who start to drift apart after Ginger, the older of the pair, starts to experience some new changes. Growing hair in unusual places, odd personality shifts, and becoming a lot more interested in boys. Also, she grows a tail. Yes, this is a film using the werewolf motif to talk about female puberty. And since I have no idea about that side of growing up, I'm not even going to try and pretend I know what I'm talking about there. No, instead I think I'll stick to pretending to know what I'm on about just talking about it as a monster movie. The film gets right on with introducing our two leads, played by Emily Perkins as Bridget and Catherine Isabel as the eponymous Ginger, two very gothy siblings faking a variety of deaths as part of a photography project for school. Now, I don't know if anyone else got this vibe, but I found it kind of interesting that out of the class's reactions to the project, none of the other students were visibly repulsed. Normally in any film where the weird goth kids do something like this, they get unanimous negative reactions. Here it was only the teacher. Something I noticed. I don't know. I liked it. Watch the film make up your own mind. After showing a day in the life of theirs, in which they run afoul of the local popular bully girl, we cut to them walking through their hometown, planning to kidnap bully girl's dog for revenge. At this point, something attacks Ginger. Yes, we all know what it is, and I love that the film doesn't make any big song and dance about trying to leave it ambiguous. In the film, they might not ever refer to what's happening to Ginger, but outside, we all know it. She got bit, she's starting to get hairy, and she's eating the local dogs. The film splits its focus between our two leads. Bridget looking for a cure, and Ginger slowly transforming. In fact, one of my favourite aspects of this is the transformation being a slow build-up over the course of the runtime. But like a lot of werewolf movies, the wolf and transformation sequence can either make or break it. So, instead of a potentially lacklustre change which makes the film look cheap, what we instead get is some subtle makeup techniques, the odd prosthetic, and some really good acting showing Ginger's transition from moody goth girl to literal man-eater. Bridget's character acts also well realised throughout the film, starting from a similar place to Ginger, if not more withdrawn due to being younger. After the initial attack, she begins to grow from concerned younger sibling to someone willing to damn themselves to a similar fate in an effort to help them. Both actresses are great in their respective roles, equally sarcastic and both feeling like actual sisters on screen. The rest of the cast are all good as well, Although I did find the mother to be a little overbearing and a touch obnoxious, but that might just be me. And outside of the mother and Sam, a drug dealer who helps Bridget search for a cure, there aren't many other characters to talk about. There's the bully girl, though she's featured very little after her introduction, and Jason, a local jock type who takes a liking to Ginger after her attack. Again though, he's only featured a few more times before vanishing near the end of the movie. This isn't really a bad thing. The focus is, of course, the two sisters, and aside from the previously mentioned, we really didn't need anyone else. We don't have to know where the wolf who bit Ginger came from. We don't need to. It's not important. Speaking of wolves, let's talk about the one Ginger becomes. Like I said earlier, I really appreciated the slow, gradual transformation, starting with some hair sprouting from her healed wounds to the full moon-triggered final change. While most of it was subtle, like Ginger getting sharper teeth every time the scene moves to another day, there was occasionally something bigger happening, like her growing a dewclaw or a tail, both of which are treated with the appropriate amount of body horror. Towards the end though is where things really start to move quickly. Ginger's hair changes colour completely and her face becomes extremely lupine. Then we get to the final transformation and it is visceral. Like most werewolf films, the change is incredibly painful looking. Only most don't have the victim vomiting up a lot of blood while it happens. Ginger's wolf form itself is a unique look. All the major hallmarks are there, wolf head, ash back, perpetual snarl, but there's something pushing it from being merely a larger wolf. For starters, it's neither bi or quadrupedal, keeping the humanoid hands and upper torso while still being able to walk on all fours. The hair, where there is any, is a sickly white with the rest of it, including the head, bare skin, which still looks uncomfortably human. The head also adds to the monstrousness. Again, while some werewolves are more or less a supernatural wolf with nothing different to show, this one pushes things. The snarl is permanently fixed on the face, and the way it pulls the muscles and skin inwards exaggerates the ferocity, and makes it seem like something truly unnatural. The same with the eyes. There's a slight bulge which pushes the creature beyond normal. 
That said, sometimes the way the head moves slowly you can tell there's not much ability to emote beyond snarling. And yes, since it is a female werewolf, there are boobs. Six of them in fact. And no, they are not pretty. Ginger snaps his ace. The cast's fantastic and the effects are great. It's got a great tone, which has a few spots which don't quite work, and again one or two moments which I wasn't a fan of, but that's not a deal breaker. The soundtrack's also pretty good, if you enjoy that alternative, industrial, early noughties sound from bands like Soulfly and Fear Factory. I found someone had done a playlist on Spotify which had recreated the soundtrack, and added a few from the sequels as well. I was actually listening to it while I did the artwork for this, so that gets a recommendation as well.
Okay, so this is another one where I just went for basic black and white. Uh, I'm still not 100% happy with how the markers turned out on the Minotaur picture. So for the time being, I'm kind of just going to leave it just as uh, pencil and then uh, pens over the top. But this one, again, new challenges. Uh, I don't often do likenesses but I really wanted to actually try get some in this time. So I spent a lot of time matching up the faces, trying to see if I can get them to actually look like Emily Perkins and Catherine Isabel. They at least look different to each other, so I achieved part of the goal. Whether they look actually like uh, their respective actresses, I don't know, you tell me. And as well as that, I don't normally draw that big in general, at least not from the faces, so I feel mostly I've got the uh, proportions correct. I don't know, it's a huge learning curve. The wolf was really hard to figure out, more just getting the uh, position and the angle right on the head, uh, and then working out how the lower jaw was in comparison to everything else, because there's not much of a chin on the actual monster from the film. But again, I managed to struggle through the best I could. I also spent a lot of time thumbnailing this, just trying to get the right look going for the overall piece. Composition, I couldn't make my mind up. If you look on my Instagram, though, I'll probably post up like all the thumbnails I had, and since this film's got at least two sequels, I might actually use one of those for them, just to see what sort of changes I make. I think I also need to work on my hair a little bit more. Mm, the wolf looks fine, but again, on the two leads up above, I don't know. Uh, I'm nearly there. I mean, I've got the way the hair reflects looking more or less right on Bridget. I think I just need a bit more practice with it, but again, I'm not used to drawing that size and sometimes I just go straight to the digital with the hair and just leave it and block in the line art, so again, all learning curves. And as you probably noticed, I completely forgot I was filming some parts on this, so yeah, you can tell I cut a lot out of the actual final edit just because there was so much where my hand was going off camera and working on some stuff up there and not realising until well very late in the piece. But I think I've managed to pull it around okay. I quite like this one overall. Just I don't know if it's compositionally dynamic but it gets across all the information I want. And I'm kind of pleased with it. I do like how I framed the wolf with the trees, even if they do look a bit simple. And if you've made it this far, congratulations, you're pretty much at the end of the video. Thanks for watching, uh, let me know what you think of Ginger Snaps, please like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff down below. And I will see you next time.